Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, China's decided to retaliate in its trade battle it's having with the US and the EU over computer chips, solar panels, and electric vehicles. It's now announced a reduction in the quotas of the export of certain rare earth metals which are used in the manufacture of these products. The main uh, ingredients or reduction in supplies of are geranium and gallium from China to the Western countries. It's resulted in a significant increase in prices for these minerals in Europe and the US, with prices rising by approximately 100% compared to previous levels. And experts believe that the trade standoff between the US and China will continue to intensify. So what further strategies might Beijing employ in its conflict with the West? Now, the Financial Times reports that the Beijing's restrictions on germanium and gallium supplies have resulted in a near doubling of the price of these metals over the past year. Now, germanium and gallium are essential for the production of advanced microprocessors, fiber optics, solar panels and night vision devices. Any further export restrictions by Beijing could have an adverse effect on the production of these goods, which is obviously China's way of retaliation for the um, tariffs that they've been placed on their uh, electric vehicles, etc. Now, I do wonder what the process, thought process of those who impose the tariffs and restrictions on the Chinese do not realise that the Chinese will retaliate with sanctions of their own that are just as painful on those who impose them like restricting certain chips to the Chinese. They just restrict your access to some of the key ingredients in those. Then of course the Chinese find a way around the sanctions as Russia has proved is not that difficult. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund the channel and my website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation which can be done by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. Now according to the US Geological Survey, China is responsible for 98% of the global gallium production and 60% of geranium, uh, germanium production. Now, the West is heavily reliant on these Chinese supplies. And following Beijing's brutality measures, exports declined by around 50% while the prices doubled. I mean, China offers the lowest prices for rare earth metals. I mean, exports from China to Europe and the US say the most popular. I mean, the restrictions have resulted in a negative impact, uh, primarily in the final prices, as uh, Katerina Novikova, who's a professor of economics at the Russian University. Now, the restriction on the export of geranium and gallium have resulted in uh, certain problems for suppliers. I mean, the price of one kilo of gallium increased from $300 to $600 which is obviously going to increase the cost of producing semiconductors, which then impacts the direct cost of producing high-tech goods, and then obviously on the final price of those. And that's according to Yaroslav Kabakov, who's a strategy director at the Finam Investment Company. Now, this trend is particularly evident in Europe. You know, the US has been able to mitigate the situation by establishing a relationship with Vietnam, which has a good production of rare earth metals, and that's been able to meet partially the American demand, according to Novikova. However, the US was the first to take action against the Chinese economy when it imposed these controls so on advanced chips and micro equipment. So the measures imposed had a detrimental impact on the ch development of Chinese tech companies and limiting their access to critical components. I mean, Huawei uh, revealed a 30% decline in revenue in 2023. And that was attributed to the sanctions and restrictions on their access to chips by Western countries. However, China's actively investing in the development of its own semiconductor sector with the aim of reducing its uh, dependence on imports. So China introducing these restrictions last year in response to the US controls on the sale of the advanced chips and the equipment used to manufacture them. I mean, the Chinese government stated that this was being done to protect its national security and its commercial interests. Oh. 
I mean, since then, China's implemented a licensing system for the export of these metals. Now, if that's, you know what that means, that means that we can control exactly who they get, who gets them, and where, who, when they get them, and at what price. However, the indications that uh, West dependence may decrease. I mean, China's got a global uh, position in the global earth market because it's got the largest reserves. Plus, it's got the largest capacity for refining them. I mean, 70% of the world uh, else are mined there, but it's also the production. It re produces around 90% of them. I mean, they say that Chinese dominance is waiting, but I wait to see it. I mean, its share of the global rare earth market has declined from 90% in 2011 to 70%. I mean, the backdrop of various restrictions, according to Vladimir Cherenkov. Yeah, Vietnam and a few other places are doing it, but it's still a huge monopoly. Over 60% is just uh, unbelievable. Now, the while development and extraction of rare earths are happening in Australia, South America and Russia, these are limited by consumer demand and low profitability uh, of the plants. And projects that can be launched take years before they can actually take up the demand that China will not satisfy. I mean, you can produce gallium and germium in any country with high aluminium production capacities just as an expensive process. Now, following the anticipated cooling of the global inflation and the relaxation of global central bank monetary policies, it's expected that demand for these metals and elements is going to increase in line with the recovery of the electrical vehicle and green energy markets, according to Chernobyl. Ultimately, the ban on rare earth metals could stimulate the opening of new production facilities in other countries, including the US and the EU. But the environmental laws uh, are obviously going to be a barrier to that. I mean, uh, China's still going to control most of the market and that for other rare earths, and these include germanium, lithium, uh, and other particular. I mean, Russia and Brazil have about 20 million tons. India has nearly 7 million tons. Australia, 4.2 million tons, and the US has 2 million tons. Now, analysts believe that the trade war between the US is actually going to intensify rather than subside. And a report by Oxford Economics indicates that the imposition of the restrictive tariffs has resulted in a reduction of imports to the, by, from China by 35 to 40%. So anticipate that the tariffs of Chinese products will continue regardless of who becomes president in 2024. And the trade war is only going to intensify as both parties to safeguard their national interests. I mean, in 2024, seaborne shipments arriving in the US declined by more than 4% from the previous year. And that indicates that companies are stockpiling supplies in uh, anticipation of new tariffs, according to Caravan. I mean, three sectors that are really going to be adversely affected by the trade conflict are electronics, automotive manufacturing and renewable energies. I mean, the re-export of rare earth metals may be subject to restrictions, which could have an impact on the production of uh, electronic components such as trips and, uh, chips and transistors, transistors. And the shortage of semiconductors in 2023 has already been noticed by the delays in the production of uh, cars and other uh, electronic products. Furthermore, rare earths are essential for the production of the electric vehicles and should exports be prohibited, this could result in higher prices and production delays. There's also the note that the cost of lithium ion batteries already increased by 25% uh, since 2023 due to the shortage of, uh, of batteries available. I mean, additionally, it could uh, impose export restrictions on other materials uh, used in solar panels and wind timer which again would impede the development of renewable energy sources in all these other countries like the EU that are, have basically built their future uh, into uh, these things. I mean, the cost of solar panels is up by 20% due to supply restrictions from China. And the EU is aiming to be at the forefront of um, uh, renewable energy. That's a significant setback. And I mean, in the near future, I don't think we should anticipate any resolution to these conflicts. Instead, I think we're gradually going to see a fragmentation of the global economy with the emergence of two at least key centres of trade interaction. 
when the key centers of trade interaction are going to be China and the United States and all other countries will align with one of them. Well, we already know what the one with China is aligning with, which is the BRICS with India, Russia. And that's really going to be the, where the BRICS Plus, as it continues to develop. I mean, the BRICS Plus has the natural resources, the cheap energy and the manufacturing capability to win trade wars with the EU, US, EU and the G7. And anyway, we thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget the comment section and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.